Hi there. Welcome to Primal Perspectives at the Primal Lab. My name is Ben Sanford and I'll be your guide today. So today um, I'm really excited to speak with my first guest actually. And this is uh, a good friend of mine, the one and only Bill Marple. And uh, Bill is an instructor of tracking. He's a tracker and also a teaches tracking. And we're going to find out a lot more about what that means today. So I'm, I'm really excited to explore the universe of tracking with Bill and bring that to you. So thanks for watching. here with my best buddy uh, Bill Marple. I, very, How's it going Ben? Uh, it's going good. <laughs> Thanks for uh, taking the time to do this with me and do the trial run, be the guinea pig. Not, not a problem man, I appreciate you asking. Sure, yeah. So uh, today we're going to be, you know, the intention of this interview is to uh, start a series of what I'm calling a primal perspective, which is kind of complementary to our curriculum. And it's a chance for me to talk to, have conversations with people I really uh, respect their perspective and I think uh, bring a lot of value to the subject and are an expert, expert in some field. And of course, when it came to tracking, which is our first subject. And say, so this is the trial run before you get to talk to those people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so I thought I'd start with you be, before I made a fool of myself in front of them. Right. So, um, no, seriously, I, I think I really admire First of all, your uh, capacity as a tracker, but also just your the way you communicate and the way you share is really valuable. So, um, yeah, so I just feel fortunate that you're my friend, colleague, teacher, all kinds of things. So, um, Likewise. anyway, so so why don't we start with uh, you know to kind of give this little context um, what primal means to me, and then uh, in terms of the primal perspective and why that's important. So, uh, and then if you have anything you want to say about that, and then I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions. It's going to be on you. So, not a problem. Um, and do you have a time limit, by the way? No, not too much. Okay, so like 12 hours is fine. Yeah, yeah. It's just in the year. Half, I'm open. So <laughs> you know. Cool. Um, so the reason uh, prim primal perspective, you know, our our thing here at Tribal Edge is. Uh, basically looking at things from uh, what I call the primal arts. And so it's, you know, there's all these skill sets that are fundamental to our being and always have been. And, um, you know, there's different ways of looking at them. And what I'm fascinated by is looking at them from a primal perspective, which the word primal really means like essential, fundamental, very like core, um, original is another word, you know, like prime, the number, reference it there. So, so it's like the first or original perspective in a sense. So, um, and I feel like when we do that, we get down to some really cool uh, truths, some really essential, simple, it simplifies things and it kind of purifies things, which um, I find that really valuable. So, and at that level, we end up kind of noticing what I, I refer to as principles um, which kind of can be like first principles or be like the essence of how things work and how that, how everything else seems to kind of build on from there or express from there. So, so a couple of things that we're looking for in the conversation are kind of the awareness of these core principles in, in the subject, in this case of tracking, and also awareness of process, uh, because that's a big part of both the field and also learning the field, you know, there's a process to that. And then uh, any patterns that you might notice throughout your experience of tracking, which is interesting because that's kind of what tracking is about. So in a way, it's really cool to start with this this uh, conversation because we're we're kind of in a way exploring uh, the nature of primal perspective in a sense because that's in one way we could maybe describe tracking. But um, so that's where we're starting from. Cool. Um, any thoughts on that or should we just get into questions? I mean, 
just, <clears throat> you know, as I was sitting here listening to you talk about your perspective on, I don't know, pri primality, <laughs> primalness, <laughs> whatever you want to term it. Um, yeah. You know, I was just sort of thinking about like my own connection to primal, like the primal within myself and the primal that I see in, in other people and so on. And I, I, I just like the way you explain it because to me, you know, pr the word primal in our regular society, you know, seems to be like for, I think for many people, not for everybody, but for many people almost has a negative connotation to it. You know, like there's a there's a fear of the word primal. If something is is like primal in nature, we we usually tend to sort of like dig our heels in against that. And um, you know, to me, it's like, well, what is it about being a primal person? Like being in touch with what it means to be primal, and um, you know, like you're talking about underlying principles and concepts. You know, and to me, that I think that just means like honesty you know, there's something about the primal self, which is so honest about, um, you know, the, 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 the core internal of who you really are. Um, you know, and I just, I sort of think that speaks to where we're at as a society, um, which is like, we're, we're sort of scared of that, um, potential of who we are and, and so on. So, um, I really like that introduction. I, I like the way you explained it and, um, yeah, I think tracking is definitely one of the the huge inroads into like getting in touch with that and who you are. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then there's the perspective part. I didn't really say anything about that. And we had a short talk about that the other day. Yeah. But uh, you know, obviously perspective is a huge part of tracking. So maybe I'll just kind of weave that into the story as we go. Sure. Um, so, you know, I want to start with just for people that don't know how what an amazing person you are uh just give us a little bit of a you know your background in relationship to tracking and, and why this is important to you yeah i mean i i never had a like i didn't grow up going camping really i, I did in my my teen years and that was just something i discovered on my own but you know this wasn't like earth-based connection nature connection or wilderness wasn't really a part of my family or my my pardon me, my up, upbringing. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I sort of found it a little bit later in life as I became an adult, I was really um, excited about going and visiting wild places. Um, you know, when I when I first started getting into the woods, I, I started going, you know, I was living in San Diego and I would frequently go to um, Yosemite National Park um, and some of the other national parks there. And I, I wanted so deeply and so badly to connect to nature um, and, uh, I, it's a long story, but at some point I found I couldn't really connect to it in the way I wanted through regular backpack, backpacking, hiking, and camping skills. Um, even though I really enjoy that, it's not, it didn't have that sense of connection and authenticity that I was look, really looking for. Um, and then along the way, I, I, um, attended a course at Tom Brown Jr.'s Tracker School, um, and just immediately fell in love with the philosophy that was presented there. And then, um, you know, from there I, I volunteered or I applied to be an intern. Um, and then from an intern, a, a, after I became an intern, um, I was invited to stay to train to be an instructor. And then um, I was an instructor at Tracker for almost eight years. And I, I still go back there to teach occasionally. Um, you know, and I have since struck out on my own and I teach tracking to um, both, both civilian personnel and military um, law enforcement and so on. Um, so I, I really like, you know, what I, what I love about tracking is, um, the, the awareness that comes to you from tracking that really brings you into connection with the world around you and, you know, how that connection fosters, um, a greater degree of choice in your life, um, to really become, you know, the type of person that you want to be in the world. So, um, yeah, for me, it's, it's been life-changing. You know, it's my whole life. It's the way I look at the world. And um, yeah, I just like feel really lucky to have discovered it and, and really honored to help bring it to other people. Awesome. Yeah. And you do that well, sir. Well, it's, a real, it's a real joy to watch you in your element and watch you teach and to learn with, from you and with you. Um, well, I appreciate that, man. We sure had some good times out at the land out in Squim. Yes, we have. So 
let me, you know, this seems like kind of a simplistic question, but I think it helps get, get us right to the core, down to that essential primal level. And uh, so, if, you know, and you can use whatever definition you want or even create your own right now, but um, for those that aren't really in touch with the subject and how uh, meaningful it is to us, how, you know, what is tracking? Let's just start there. It's a good question. Um, you know, like, <clears throat> like tracking could be defined in a, a number of different ways. Um, at its, at its most basic level, what we tell people is, is tracking is, you know, searching for and finding disturbances to a baseline. You know, that's about the most technical, um, definition I could give to you. And, um, you know, tracking, tracking is really, for me, is really the, the journey by which we, we find and discover the, the truth about things, you know, and, and I know that sounds like a little bit esoteric or strange or whatever, but, um, <clears throat> you know, in its basic sense, I, I truly believe that human beings are born to be trackers. And by tracking, I mean, following footsteps, you know, in the earth, right, the, the sort of classic track where, you know, the track itself is a, a disturbance, a, a visual disturbance to the baseline of everything around it. And what tracking really does is, is allow you to study the relationships that you see all around you. You know, so, you know, I, I use deer as an example because people sort of seem to think tracking um, with relationship to hunting in particular, but you know, you think about like how important it was in the development of human beings to be able to identify a set of deer tracks, you know, determine the age of when this trail was left and, you know, really look deeply into those tracks to gain and know and understand the personality of the deer um, so that they might make a prediction about the future um, and run into that deer at a later date in order to successfully hunt and feed their families. And, you know, just that simple act, just that um, honed over, over centuries and centuries, thousands, tens of thousands of years, um, I really think has developed a brain within human beings that is designed to do that. So, you know, looking at those deer tracks in the ground and saying, well, I think the deer you know, is a female that came this way two days ago and is hungry and is heading towards a feeding area. So tomorrow at sunup, if I'm just over that mountain and next to the lake, I stand a good chance of being there when the deer comes by. To me is no different than like an economist um, or someone studying the, the marketplace and saying like, well, I know that this stock went up and this stock went down and interest rates are doing this and housing markets are doing that. So six months from now, I know if I buy this stock, I'll be able to sell it at a, a better price. Um, and I, I just think that's the way that human beings are designed to look at the world. Um, so, so it starts with something very primal um, where a person is really connected to the earth and to their environment and seeing all of these things around them, you know, and observing that and then asking questions about it fosters this sense of awareness that allows us this um, greater aspect of choice. So I don't know if that actually explains it very well or not, but. Oh, I think that's a great explanation. Yeah. I love the, I love the idea that, you know, there's kind of this participation, participation in our own development through tracking that possibly is one of the things that helped, helped us become who we are. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even, even in my own lifetime, just experiencing the shifts in my own thinking and, and how uh, tracking has influenced my mind. I can only imagine generationally, generationally over time what that's possibly done for humans. It seems like a well, pretty you cool know, thing. It's really interesting, right? It's like, you know, I'm, I'm frequently asked, or I actually ask my students to ask themselves the question, you know, why is it that you would want to learn this skill? You know, like, you can get pretty good at tracking. You can, you can learn the base skills in a fairly short period of time. But for the people that I work with that are really, like, studying to be real trackers, um, it's a fairly serious investment of time and energy, you know, no, no different than becoming a martial artist, I would imagine, you know, like, okay, like you can teach somebody a handful of skills that will like maybe help them if they get into trouble somewhere, but to really be a martial artist, um, takes a long time to study. And what I ask people is like, so why would you want to do this? 
right? Like in this day and age, like coronavirus not um, accepting, you know, why would you want to be a tracker? Um, you don't, you don't need to hunt your food. You can just go to the store and get it. You know, you don't need to, you know, maybe um, escape from some sort of warring tribe out there, you know, in terms of a human tracking scenario. So why would you invest this type of energy into it? And, um, you know, when I taught, I taught full time for the military um, tactical tracking for almost two and a half years um, down in North Carolina. And I was often asked by military guys the same question, which is, you know, why would we learn the skill of tracking when we have stuff like drones and GPSs and um, scanning equipment and so on? And my answer to them was always the same. is like, look, you are training yourself to be as aware of your environment as you possibly can so that you can make the best choice in any situation that you find yourself in. And the more you study it, the more it helps and the more it sort of builds on itself. No, so you, you start in the context of tracking a deer through your woods, you know, and before you know it, you're using the perspective of the tracker in, you know, walking down the street or going about your daily business or whatever. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's got this self-reinforcing. Yeah, for sure. Process, yeah. Cool. Well, <clears throat> You're kind of answering some of these as we go already, but um, what, why, I mean, I, I think that kind of addresses that. I'm just going to ask the question and we see what else I can squeeze out of you. Uh, so why, why, why is tracking important and why is it relevant? You kind of did I mean, speak to that. I mean, I think, I think it's important on a personal level for some of the reasons I've just described. Like, I think that connecting to your own um, your own senses, you know, the, the, the five senses that we have, the, you know, sight, smell, hearing, taste, touch. Um, you know, our teacher, Tom Brown, really likes to say, like, well, those five things, like, they come together and they sort of form this harmonic of awareness where it's not only your eyesight, it's not only your hearing, but all of it is coming together, you know, in, in order to really inform us of what we're experiencing in the world around us you know and like on a personal level what i what i really enjoy about that is that <clears throat> you know tracking tracking is an external journey that becomes an internal journey um that you know we start studying the world and the landscape and the world wilderness around us out there enough um, and before we know it, we're directing that same power of, the, of awareness internal to ourselves and tracking that same wilderness and landscape that we hold inside of us. You know, so purely from a perspective of enlightenment, uh, personal enlightenment in your daily life, whatever that may be, I think it's, I think it's incredibly important and incredibly valuable. Um, but even more so as a society, um, you know, I mean, I think the current times that we're living through right now are really sort of underlying the fact that, you know, we need awareness now more than ever. Um, you know, this, this time period that we're living in, many people sort of have the illusion that they can live separate from the world around them. You know, that, that, that this this really sort of in many ways incredible industrialized society that we've created, you know, gives us this illusion that we're somehow separated from the natural world. We're separated from the people around us and we're separated from, you know, the earth itself. And that's just not true. <laughs> like, like it's just not the case. Um, and I happen to believe that the only way we're going to survive as a global society is by developing that type of awareness so that we, we truly do understand like our actions, every choice we make moves out through the world and affects everything else. Likewise, all the choices that are being made around us come back through the world and they affect us. You know, and one of the things that tracking teaches us is that we're both creating and being created by the world around us all at the same time and and developing a sense of the tracks it starts so simply with like like oh uh, well 
you know, I see a set of coyote tracks and I understand it's an overstep walk and I understand what that might mean about the coyote's um, intentions or bearing or age or whatever, or fitness, you know, but it, it becomes something so much more, you know, and, and by studying the, by, by studying and, and training our awareness in this way, we ultimately come to the conclusion that there is no separation between us and the rest of the world and that our actions matter and have relevance and impact and that the world's actions have impact upon us. And I think that's the only way to sort of overcome some of the challenges that we're facing right now. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, Tracking will save the world then. Right, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Um, right. Yeah, it's powerful to, to uh, experience the holistic type of thinking that it brings, you know, from being able to analyze, but also integrate, you know, in a systems thinking kind of way. Right. So. I really like, you know, it, it just kind of reminds me, like, um, I have a good friend of mine who lives right up the road from me named Dan Gardoki, um, who, um, you know, has, has had this just incredible career as a tracker as well. Um, and specifically, he's focused on bird language and birds. And if you've ever tracked with Dan, you'll see he has this like incredible awareness of all of the birds around him, you know, and he knows the songs of all of the birds and he knows the behaviors of all the birds. And he knows what it means when a chickadee makes an alarm. And he knows what, a chick what it means when a chickadee makes an alarm in reference to a robin who's alarmed. And he knows what that, you know, he can trace all this stuff around all the time, you know, and when, I was listening to him one time. He said, one of the things that I love about studying the birds, you know, which is just another form of tracking. Um, he said, one of the things I love about studying the birds, he's like, the birds are constantly drawing me out of myself to pay attention. And um, he said, anytime that I get too self-absorbed, I start worrying too much about my day. I start you know, thinking about all those problems, I, I hear the voices of the birds and I'm reminded that there's a whole world outside of myself, you know? So I, he, what he's saying is, is that it prevents him from becoming egotistical and self-absorbed and, and it helps him to, to maintain a sense of balance in his life. And I just thought that was a really cool way to put it. That's uh, really powerful. Yeah. 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 He's amazing, man. I'm listening to, to hit some of his uh, bird calls. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he sounds like an actual, like you, if he was doing it behind me right now, I, I wouldn't know yeah. if it was a or a bird. Pretty amazing. Uh, Pretty unbelievable. Cool. Yeah. Um, so let's see if we can get down to, you know, as we're, you know, take this from the perspective, you can do either one or both, of uh, your perspective as a tracker, but also someone who might be interested in learning tracking. And I think you can kind of address these at the same time in a way. But what do you think are, how would you describe the <clears throat> the core principles of tracking? Even just one or two, doesn't you know? Certainly, there's many, but uh, you know, what are your favorite ones? Or or even kind of the basic assumptions of tracking that make tracking work? I mean, every every perspective kind of stands on some sort of assumption or set of ideas that makes that field operate, kind of like mathematics or whatever, right? So, so what are some of the uh, featured principles of tracking that really make it um, make you a tracker or make you tracking <laughs> make me studying to be a tracker <laughs> yeah. I'm still uncomfortable make, with make that. one a tracker. doesn't have to be yeah. you know like um, you know within within the philosophy that you and I have studied then um, I know you know there's there's this core concept um, that Tom Brown refers to as the sacred question. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's so funny, like, if I had to say, how do you define what a tracker is in one sentence, right? A tracker is someone who's asking the sacred question. Um, and, you know, Tom can explain this much better than me, but he, he, he talks about how this um, this way of tracking that we're discussing, you know, came to us, has this um, Apache background. You know, it's based in the Apaches. 
uh, particularly the Lipon Apache. And, um, you know, and he talks about how central um, it was for people to learn tracking in the era that his teacher grew up in. And he said specifically the, the, the sacred question was so important because it was the foundation stone of all of tracking. You know, for those of you out there that are like wondering what I'm talking about, the sacred question, you can call it the sacred question if you want, if that word bothers you, you know, I'm not here to like preach to anyone. Um, you know, you can call it the very important question if you want, you know, just know that to those people, it was elevated to that sort of like spiritual religious significance. It had that much impact for them. Um, so we still use that language. And, um, you know, like I remember going to the Pine Barrens the very first time on my first tracking class and Tom is talking and, um, you know, on like on, on Monday, you know, the class is going to graduate on Saturday, but on Monday he said, you know, at the end of the class, I'm going to talk to you guys about the sacred question. He's like, it's the big secret. It's everything. Like it's the fuel behind everything. Like, oh, you know, and every day he built it up like, oh, grandfather, stalking wolf. He used to ask the sacred question all the time, blah, blah, blah. And like, he wasn't telling us what it was you know, but he ended the class talking about the sacred question. And, uh, and he, he wrote it up on the board. And the sacred question is, what happened here? And, you know, I remember looking at it, and I was like, that's it. That's the big secret. That's, you know, what happened here? Like, that's going to bring me all of this, like, connection and enlightenment and know where the animals are and like understand what they're up to and this, that, and the other. And I was like really crestfallen by the whole thing. Um, but I remember him saying that the biggest failure in tracking is the failure to ask the sacred question. And it, it really wasn't until many years later that I realized the full impact of that statement and that boy, like, you know, the tracker has to have this, mind that is always questioning things and what happens is we question things you know it pushes our field of awareness further and further and further out you know it pushes us to understand more and more and more of the world around us and when i really like look at my life you know and and in those areas where i didn't have the awareness that i wanted or i missed something or whatever like it, it always comes back to that like I, I didn't in the moment ask the question, you know, which, which means, you know, in that moment, I didn't want to have a connection to anything around me. Mm. And, um, you know, for anybody out there that's just starting, like the fact that that, that is very subtle um, should, should speak of its, of its importance, right? Like, like a tracker is someone who studies things in the minutest of details. And um, <clears throat> I'm here to tell you, if you really want to get good at tracking, just start asking, you know, what happened here? Like, you know, why was, you know, that picture on the wall framed and hung in a certain way? Like, why is it tilted this way? Like, how much dust is up on top of it? And why would it be dusty? Like, when was the last time it was cleaned? You, know, you don't have to have answers. You just have to keep on asking the question. And what happens is just by asking, you've pushed yourself to be that much more aware. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're listening to this right now and that sounds kind of funny, just trust me. Like I've been there for years. I was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And, <clears throat> you know, really the joke was on me. Okay. Like um, just ask that question, you know, and you can ask others too, if you want, like what happened here, you know, what is it that, this thing taught me, you know, what is it telling me about the world around me? And, um, you know, to me, like, that's my ultimate goal is to ask that question as much as I possibly can. And, and hopefully to really live that question as much as I can. That's really awesome. Um, Bill, do you think it's, see, in my experience, asking that question has led to, you kind of talked about this, like it opens up other questions, obviously. So, in a sense, I feel like the, if we were to reduce the idea of the sacred question to a concept or principle, it would be um, being an opening 
or having a questioning mindset. Um, like that's really the, the, um, uh, the intention of asking that question, almost like it's a mantra, you know what I mean? Like it gets you to a place to where you're just an opening, you are living in, you're questing, you're living in a questioning, you know, mindset. So, uh, I mean, we obviously need the form of the sacred question, what happened here to start with, but do you feel like that's uh, accurate that it transcends in that way? Yeah. And you know, Ben, like the more I, the more I really look at this, the more I really think, um, I think we, when Tom said the failure to ask the sacred question, I'm, I'm wondering if what he really means is, do you have awareness of the question you're asking? You know, because I, I actually think all of us are asking a question all the time. Right. But I think that the problem is, is that it, it goes into our dead space, right? right? Like if we don't have awareness of it, then we don't really understand, you know? So, um, you know, so, sorry, my, my dog uh, really wanted to get in here to get his toy. So he just <laughs> came into the room. If you hear some squeaking, uh, it a squeak. yes. he was like barking really loud to come in and now he's wrestling around on the floor with his, his toy. Um, it's all right. It's a reminder to not take myself too seriously. Right. Like, um, you know what I, so what I, what I really think is that we're all asking questions all the time. And, um, you know, like Tom does this thing in class where he says, okay, I want you to close your mind or close your eyes and think of the color red, you know, red, 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 every different type of color red that you can possibly imagine. Think red, 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 just saturate yourself with it and then open your eyes up and what do you see? We see all the different shades of red around you, right? And, and what he's really telling you to do is to force your mind to ask the question, where is all the color red around me right now? You know, and that question becomes a filter between you and the rest of the world because you've told your mind, I only want to see red. Right. Well, you know, what if you were always asking the question like, you know, I'll, I'll never forget we were in this class and we we're doing some internal work with people, you know, and this woman sort of came across this, this um, in this moment of clarity, she said, geez, you know, like I've always been question, asking the question, how come nobody likes me? And, you know, what do you think she sees around her all the time? You know, um, you know, really, it gets really, really touchy real quick um, because the power of that sacred question is what filters our perception to the rest of the world. Right. Um, so, um, it's pretty really, like, you know, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, the sacred question is one of those tools that helps to, um, make a constructive use of some of our biases and filters yeah. in a way that's right yeah. pointing. Towards. Yeah, that's a great way to say it. Yeah, constructive use rather than destructive. <laughs> right. Like you said, it is happening. We're, we're starting for things all the time. That's just yeah. pointing it out. Yeah, right. <laughs> any, any other, uh, I mean, I, I get that. I, I, I think that's just so powerful that that is perhaps the core concept like you said, the defining attribute of a tracker is someone who's sure. asking a question. Um, what else comes to mind in terms of core principles or concepts that you just couldn't do without to be a tracker? Well, you know, like I'm, I'm actually reminded of doing some tracking with you out at your land in Squim where, um, you know, earlier I said, you know, what is, what is tracking at its most technical level? Like a track is a disruption to a baseline. You know, when we think of trackers, we think of someone who can, find that deer track or find that coyote track or find those bird tracks. And um, <clears throat> I think what most people miss is that like there's a relationship implied in that, um, in that definition, right? A track is a disturbance to a baseline. So really like you can't have a track if you don't understand the baseline, right? And what happens is, wow, this dog is like going completely crazy in my office right now. He's just like running around. Um, yeah, what, what happens is that, um, you know, as a tracker, we, we start off by wanting to see the tracks, 
but then very quickly we move to wanting to understand a baseline because I know as a tracker, if I can really see the baseline, then I'll be able, if I can see the pattern in the baseline, I'll be able to really see the disruptions to it, the breaks to the pattern. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I remember coming out to teach a tracking class at your land and you were like, Hey man, do you want to go pre-track, you know, look around for what's in the area uh, before the class shows up the next day. And I was like, yeah, sure. it sounds great. You know, we went out and looked around and you were like, well, look, what about over here? Go check out over here. And I looked and I was just like, Ben, I think we've got a problem. Um, you know, I don't think there's any animals here. And you're like, seriously? Like, look, here's a raccoon trail. Here's a fox trail. And you're like, here's where an elk came through. I think this it was a bear. a bear. A bear came by. And I was like, uh-oh. You know, and I, I sort of realized like, okay, like something's not right here. And I, I realized that I had made one of the cardinal mistakes in tracking was I was looking for a track without seeing the baseline first, you know, and then once I took some time to go, you know, because you've got um, a particular type of tree there called a big leaf maple, that's just like one of them, you know, that we don't have around here, you know, and they're called big leaf maples for a reason, you know, the leaves are like <laughs> freaking huge. <laughs> um, and uh, like the personality of the track was just like totally different than anything that I had ever looked at before. Um, so what I needed to do was go have a sit, look around, observe the baseline for a while, and then the track started to pop out. It was a really good lesson for me. Yeah, so, really cool. Like that concept of baseline, I think, is just incredibly important. Yeah, man, that's, uh, sounds like one of the core concepts. Um, for sure. Something I was going to ask you there, I, it, it, I lost it, so I'm just going to move on. Right. Um, so we have so far the sacred question and knowledge of baseline, maybe, yeah. kind of as a couple yeah, of pillars. I think like, those are like looking at, you know, like how much awareness do you really have of your baseline around you to be able to see the disturbances to it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's really cool, too, because that to me, that's always been a reassurance. You know, we don't obviously live in a sandy environment, you know, like right. you said, it's a different, different environment. So a lot of the tracking that I get to do is uh, kind of sign tracking, trailing, that kind of stuff. Sure. And, um, but the cool thing is, it seems like for anyone learning this is, this is like a way to kind of make use of all of the dirt time you don't know you have, because what, what everyone has a relationship to whatever baseline they're in. Yeah, maybe they haven't done it really consciously, but there's some some relationship there. Maybe your own house, even you know. Sure. So it, I love that uh, everything has a baseline, you know. <laughs> and it's like, so you, you have more relationship than you think. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. What what would you say is the? How would you describe the? You can follow this. The fundamental process of tracking. So, what is occurring inside of you? Or, or what is occurring inside of the tracker as they're tracking? And you could even extend that to as they're learning tracking, because it might, especially in this subject, it might be very similar, a similar pattern hmm. or similar process. Does that question make sense? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. You know, what is it that is going on inside? You know? I can hear you thinking it, it's squeaking. I think, yeah, oh, it's a dog. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's squeaking, right? Yeah. Uh, the wheels are squeaking. I don't know why he just like wanted to come in here and do this right at this time. Um, but, uh, you know, well, what? it's creating a new baseline, so we'll get used to it. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, no kidding. There we go. Um, so, what is happening? I mean, yeah, what, what's going on? Like, you can you know, think of I it. Think, I think that, you know, a, a tracker starts off with an intention, right? An intention, let's just say, to find a fox, right? You're out walking around. Um, fox has been in your chicken coop. Chickens are all torn up, okay? And that's your intention, is to find this fox, right? And you start asking that sacred question, you know, where are the fox trails? Where are the fox trails? 
you know, and you've, you've created this filter between you and the rest of the world, you know, and, and then that you find the disturbance, you know, that comes through your filter, you know, and you're bouncing off your internal experience, right? You're comparing that to any other fox trails you've ever seen in your life. You know, does this make sense? Is this what I'm looking for? Is this the right time period that I'm looking for? You know, is this the right size I'm looking for? Is this behaving like a fox? And the, the questions start multiplying immediately. You know, and then as you walk that trail, this fox trail that you're on, you know, you're, you're just repeating that, um, that journey, like every step of the way, every step you're, you're taking that, you know, whatever that disturbance is and bouncing it off, you know, running it through your filter and bouncing it off yourself in order to take your net, you know, make your next choice and take your next step and do it again and again and again and again, you know, so, you know, for me, that's what I really think this comes to is it's a, a dialogue between the tracker and the earth um, that the earth is saying, Hey, there's a Fox here. Right. And you're walking along and you're, you're, you know, you're trying to find a signal in the noise. Right. right. And um, you know, and if you find the right signal, right, you know, you've got it right in here. Right. And, and you, you have, you start to have that connection to the earth through the track mm -hmm. uh, that is guiding your choices and working with you to help you to um, accomplish your goal. Very uh, cool. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's sort of heartwarming, you know, like <clears throat> um, any, anybody, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to track with trackers from all over the world, um, naturalists, um, hunters, you know, safari trackers, um, and even um, combative trackers, people who, who track, who do man tracking in a tactical environment. And all of them who've been in the game long enough will say the same thing, that the tracks are the voice of the earth speaking to the tracker and guiding him or her along the way. So, yeah, that's, I think that's the experience. Yeah. It gets more complicated and more nuanced for sure. But. Sure, sure, yeah. But no, that, I think you really touched on the core process there, and that's beautiful. Yeah. And what's kind of uh, really, really cool about that is it sounds, for anyone who might not think of themselves as a tracker, it sounds really familiar, you know? <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> yeah. like what we do, you know? Yeah, I was going to um, say, like, you're probably already doing this anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah but so it's like, you know. Bring some awareness to it. Maybe you could do it in a different way. It's, it's just, it seems like the distinction is making it a conscious process and putting it in a certain direction, a certain way with a certain sure. tool set, you know? Sure. Um, it's really cool. So there's hope for people that don't think there's trackers. There's totally hope for people. people that right? Yeah. Like they don't, the, the, the software's already been downloaded. Exactly. Yeah. We've it. been doing this for eons. Yeah. <laughs> there's already an app for that right back there. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> you don't have to even log in. You've got it. <laughs> let's see i think um you doing okay for time we're coming close to an hour here yeah. uh so many cool questions bill huh. um how about what what has been or what is your biggest challenge with tracking as a tracker Ooh, geez good question into the pool <laughs> yeah yeah i mean um maybe you could frame I, it in terms of learning or becoming a tracker no or, I, I think i got a good answer for that you know like you know we we have a mutual friend um i don't know if he wants me to say his name but um you know he he's fond of like drawing this picture of a little stick figure right on to take a piece of paper and a little stick figure and a track in front of him and say, and he'll say, okay, here's a trick question. What's between you and the track, you know? And the answer to that is nothing, right? There is nothing there. So anything that comes between you and the track is something that you put there, right? There, there is no block to your awareness except what you're choosing to have. 
right? Which sounds a little unfair and that's how it feels most of the time. But, you know, you, you start off in tracking and it's all external. You're, you're learning about gait patterns. You're learning about sign. You're learning about animal behaviors. You're learning about baseline and leaves and pine needles and so on. Um, and at a certain point, um, you start to realize that there is nothing between you and a track, you know, and that if there's something out there that you can't see, it's because you've got something in here that's keeping you from seeing it. So, so you really start to realize like, wow, I'm really just playing a game of chess against myself um, every time I walk a trail, right? Every time I look at a track, it's really just me playing against me. Um, which feels a little doubly unfair sometimes. <laughs> um, but I, I think I, I frequently get caught up um, in, um, in attempting to pay attention to too many things at one time. You know, so I, I end up getting a little distracted sometime. Um, or I pay too much attention to one, one thing at one time. You know, so there's, there's always this balance back and forth of like how many things to pay attention to and how focused you want to be. Um, and I'm still sort of working with that balance of, you know, maintaining awareness of a, a string of tracks and also maintaining awareness of what's, what's around me. Um, and, and balancing that in a way, like if they, if they are out of balance, then I'll make mistakes, right? And then I have to start taking a look at the things in me like, okay, so why am I doing that? Like, why, you know, what was it as I replay things, let's say like I'm following a trail and I, I get off trail or I lose it or, or whatever else, I start to have to think like, okay, so replay that in your mind, Bill. As you're walking this trail, what is it that you were experiencing that caused you to sort of fumble this a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, I'm reminded of another, what I would consider a, a core concept, which would be, uh, I keep hearing Tom say, vary your vision, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. The ability to do exactly what you're talking about, find the yeah. blend or the balance of, you know, either zooming inward and outward or zooming to the small. Yeah, and to, you know, so. yeah. And, and it's just like, like that apparently was, was probably, a, you could put it in the core concept category. Um, like this, exactly what you just said, um, you know, like paying attention to the very small and then the very big and then the very small again, it was, Tom has said, it's a, it's a, a journey that he said, it should feel like breathing, you yeah. know, that you're either going internal to external, internal to external, or you're going small to large to small to large. Yeah, I really appreciate that because that, that really brings in perspective of peace. Because those are, those, are, those are clearly uh, different perspectives, you know, the internal direction, the external, and being able to switch and, and be aware of your own switching, you know. Yeah, for certain. So, man. So powerful. Yeah, incredibly important. What, uh, I, I don't know if you already said this, I think you kind of did, but if you only had one thing. Um, if you could only teach someone one thing, what would it be in terms of tracking? One thing. I mean, we kind of talked about the sacred question already. Um, Just wanted to double check I mean, that. I mean, I know, I know if Brown was here, what he would say. He would say, sit area, go to your sit area. You know, like, I know that's something that you really emphasize. Um, you know, this idea of you know, going to the same spot in nature again and again and again and again and again um, at different times during the day to just sort of sit quietly and observe. Right. And, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but I, I sort of like the concept in, in tracking of, of like if you, if you know one place really, really, really well, then you that place becomes a perspective point for any other place you find yourself in. Right. The patterns of the birds and the changes of the season and the um, patterns of the animals, you know, the foliage, the vegetation, the plants, the plant cycles, um, 
I've, I've often said, you know, you asked for a definition of a tracker. I've, I've often said that, you know, a tracker is somebody who compares things to other things, right? Always looking at relationships. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's probably what I would lump in there along with a sacred question. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to kind of wind this down towards an end here, but, uh, um, Let's see, what's another potent one I want to include? What do you think people are missing about tracking? Um, what are we, what are people not getting? This could be students of tracking, this could be the newbie, the person who doesn't even know it's a thing, whatever you want to, whatever that opens up. I'm using the sacred question here, but <laughs> yeah, no, I'm thinking that's a great question. What are people missing? Man, I mean, I think, I think people are really missing the, the connection part of it if they're not careful. Like I think tracking engenders a sense of connection to the earth but I really think that a lot of people miss that, you know, if you're a tracker, wherever you go, the earth is really your silent partner. You know, the earth is always supporting your own movements and always is the core of all of your observations. And just that switch of perspective to look at the earth as being an actual partner in how you move through your world um, I think is probably what I see people missing the most. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Huge. Yeah. And, and you too, for that matter, like, you know, like I, I have to remind myself of that all the time. Sure. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a game changer. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> so let's see. Well, is there any, anything else you want to include or any final thoughts? You want to mention? I think I'm good. I mean, like, look, I take tracking really seriously. Like this is my whole life's work for lack of a better term. Um, but I mean, like for anybody out there that's just, like listening to this for the first time, like I have a tendency to talk like in really big terms. Um, and, and really like what I like about tracking is, is it's very grounded, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you know, and it's very, very common sense. And, uh, and it's very, very rational um, and intuitive at the same time. And, um, you know, you don't have to, if you're, if you're interested in this, you're poking around, look, when I first started, I hated tracking. You know, I took my standard class and I thought it was the dumbest thing I'd ever seen. Um, I couldn't stand it. I had no patience for it and no time for it and never wanted to do it in my life. Um, and then, you know, just give it a shot. Even if you feel that way, just give it a shot. <clears throat> um, no time that you invest in tracking is going to be wasted. Um, it is just incredibly valuable. Even if you spend five minutes on it, just that five minutes has the opportunity to really change who you are. So give it a shot. Awesome. Yeah, that's probably so, the only Yeah, I mean, just uh, to follow up on that, we've been talking about some kind of fairly uh, general general principles, right? So yeah. for someone to take a step forward, what would be a simple first step or practice or even resource that they could use to uh, move in that direction? Besides, of course, coming to Tribal Edge, but. Yeah, I mean, besides, uh, you know, a class with you. Um, yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> there's, there's so many resources these days um, field guides and so on. I, I'm biased. I would pick up a copy of Tracking and Nature Observation by Tom Brown um, because it provides you with a whole set of exercises. And um, there you go. There, there it is. <laughs> and uh, I, I also would, um, you know, just get out there. We don't all live in sandy environments, but everybody has mud puddles, beaches, um, softer soils, you know, you're bound to find an animal track or a person track of any type. 
And even if that, tra that trail quickly goes on to a challenging substrate, just give it a shot. You know, like see if you can find the next track and give it 10 minutes, even if you think it's totally impossible. You know, like just get out there and start doing it and um, it'll, it'll teach you volumes. Cool. Yeah. And I think just, you know, remind, remind people that you're already doing it. You just have to, yeah. uh, you know, right. come to this process. So yeah. bring some awareness to it. So Bill, is there anything that you're up to right now that you'd like people to know about or any way that they should get a hold of you if you, uh, if you um, want? You know, Ben, like I'm, I'm working on it. Um, I'm, I, you know, since I left Combat Hunter down in Carolina, you know, I've been in this sort of lull and trying to redevelop, um, you know, where I'm going with this. You know, I have a lot of great classes in mind and I'm hoping 2020, um, I will actually have a website and a class schedule. So cool. um, be watching for it sometime this year. Is it still Earth Voices at LLC or are you uh, gonna have it? Totally different, gonna cool. be totally different. We don't so have a name looking, yet. Looking forward to it and we'll certainly be uh, linking to that from our end when, when that arises. So. Cool. Thanks, Ben. My friend, uh, thank you so much for a cool conversation. We could talk about this forever. Obviously. We could talk about it forever. Sometimes we do. And sometimes <laughs> we do. Yeah. yeah. I look forward to uh, when we can also meet in the flesh. That would be great. I know. I hope it happens. <laughs> All right, dude. And, and thank you guys for watching. If, uh, if, you, if this is new to you, I hope you got something out of it. And if you're an expert, I hope you got something out of it. Um, Bill Marple. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ben. And cut. <laughs> <All right. laughs> awesome, dude.